certain things can become just you know you've heard it before I heard it mentioned about Jesus going to the cross you know and I, I've seen the movie and like you know but I want you to how do I say it? I want you to wow excellent word Rhonda I was searching for a word, and the Holy Spirit gave me a word. Immerse. Amen. That means that you get in it. You get there right there with it. You, like water, you immerse yourself. You want, want you to get there with it. Kind of put yourself on the scene so that you can understand what he went through Amen. for you. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say, I feel you, Pastor. Amen. Yes. <laughs> I want to know if I'm communicating. Yeah. So if we know the events and we kind of get a feeling of, of what went, what happened during those events, I think we're going to have, and forgive me, I don't, I'm going to use this word, I don't prefer the term Easter. I prefer the term Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's no longer in the grave. He got up. Yeah. He's not no longer nailed to the cross, but he came up out of the tomb. He's yeah. Resurrected. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's it. So I prefer. You notice how I say that nicely? Uh, yes. I said I prefer. <laughs> Amen. I prefer the term resurrection. So we're going to look at this. We're going to look together at this Passion Week. And if you look at your notes, it says Passion Week is named because of the passion with which Jesus willingly, you ought to underline that word. The passion by which Jesus willingly went to the cross for you and for me. To pay for your sin and my sin. And for the sins of his people. And in this week there are several memorable occasions. And so if you look at this blue one. Somebody said, well, Pastor, your, your, your preaching is like going to school. You're giving us handouts and all that stuff. <laughs> but I want you to know. Um, I, I don't, I, I'll look it up and I'll bring it back to you. But there have been some studies done uh, on the, how do we call it? The, 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 the biblical, of how 
don't call it biblical literacy. Asking Christians what they know about Christmas, what they know about Easter, and in and, 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 and the past, uh, Sister Janice, I have given an Easter quiz. In the past, I've done a, a, a Christmas quiz. And you know what? Most people fail it. Because they, they take this, you know, they take some story from somewhere else, but they don't take it from the Bible. So I want I want you to know what the Bible says about resurrection. <coughs> Amen? So look here. Uh, in that Passion Week, there was Monday, uh, if you read in, and it shows you the scripture, uh, he curses the fig tree all the way into the city. He weeps over Jerusalem. His Jeru he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often have I desired to take you and take you under my wings like a chick, chick ta uh, chicken takes his, his little chicks under his wings. And he weeps over Jerusalem. He cleanses the temple and says, this, 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 this has been, my father has called this a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. So he takes this whip and he whips the people out of the temple. Then he goes back down to Bethany. And remember, Bethany was the place where Mary and Martha lived. And then on Tuesday, as he is coming back into uh, the town, they notice that the big tree is withered. The disciples do. And then he spends t Tuesday teaching different parables to the people. He talks about war to you Pharisees, hypocrites. And he speaks to the Pharisees. And then he talks about his return. That's what's happening on Tuesday. As far as Wednesday is concerned, we don't see a lot, as far as I can find out, that Jesus did. We don't know a lot about what he did that Wednesday. But we do know that it was Wednesday when Jesus, when Judas betrayed him. And that's, in the passage that we're looking at today in Luke chapter 22, that's in the first six verses where Judas goes to the, to the, to the priest and for 30 pieces of silver, he agrees to betray Christ. And this one is Maudie Thursday. Maudie Thursday. And that word in the original language means command. And on this day, Jesus said, a new commandment, a new covenant I give to you. So in, in some religious denominations, uh, they've called it Maudie Thursday. And so that's what we want to look at today. This is my plan. I want to look at Monday Thursday with you today. And at the end of Monday Thursday, you see where, uh, well, actually, at the end of it, it says, and they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. So after the supper was over, after all the activities, after all that happened at supper, that Jesus. And a couple of his closest disciples, they go to the garden, and that's where we, Jesus prays, and he's praying that this cup would be removed from him. So this week we'll talk about what happened in the upper room. Next week we'll talk about what happened in the garden and prayer at the Lord's prayers. And then on by Easter time comes, we can talk a little bit about the trials, the fake trials that he went through, his dying on the cross and the resurrection. So that kind of takes us Thursday, Friday, and then then his time in the grave, and then Sunday. How's that? Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of have a full picture of what happened to him. And so I want to um, read for you, if you open up your handout. It says, verse 7, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparation for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it yet, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. And this was unique because men didn't usually carry water. So they could easily identify who Jesus wanted them to follow. It says, follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, teacher asked us, excuse me, the teacher asked, where is the guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? At verse 12, he will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, 
So they prepared the Passover. And that's that verse number. And then verse 14 says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. So there was a key word that, you, that we heard in that. He said, I want you to go and prepare for the Passover. So let's give you a little history about what Passover is. Remember? Mm -hmm. So it says Passover meal. Passover is a Jewish festival celebrating the exodus of, of, of Israel from Egypt. Remember? The Egyptians, 400 years were enslaved. Excuse me, the Israelites were enslaved 400 years to the Egyptians. And they prayed and they cried out to God to free them from bondage, from slavery in Egypt. And God calls Moses to come back from where he was, I don't have time to talk all about that, to lead them out of bondage. When we were kids, some of us, we like, go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell no, give me the blow. Pharaoh, let my people go. Remember that? <laughs> and so when God is about to get his children up out of Egypt, he calls Joshua, I think it's Joshua and, and, and Aaron and Moses together, and he says, I want each family to, gra to grab a lamb. Uh, and he gives them a, spe a specification for it has to be this perfect lamb and the, how old it has to be. And he says, I want you to, I want you to uh, sacrifice this lamb and I want you to take the blood and I want you to put it over the doorposts of each Israelite home. And then he gives them specifics about how they are to, to roast this lamb. He gives them specifics about how they are to eat this lamb. He gives them the specifics about eating bitter herbs. And the, watch this, the bitter herbs they had to eat represented how bitter their life had been yeah, yeah. under the bondage of Egypt. And the lamb became what is known as this Passover lamb because when the death angel passed through Egypt and was killing all of the firstborns, it would pass over. Amen. That's why it's called Passover. It would pass over the homes where there was the blood. Yeah. And the significance of the Passover is that Jesus is our Passover. Yeah. When the blood of Jesus is applied to your heart, you are set free from the bondage of sin. We've seen this stuff. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my sin rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. Now I'm happy all day. Say, that down, down, and then we say down where, my, where the blood was applied. Yeah. And so when the blood of Jesus, our Passover lamb, is applied to our hearts, we are set free. Amen. Amen. He says, it's along with the instructions to apply the Passover lamb's blood to their doorposts and lentils, God instituted a commemorative meal, fire roasted lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. Because God says, hey, you don't have time to, 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 to put the yeast in the bread and knead it and set it aside. Anybody who make bread, you have to set it aside and let it rise. Yes. He said, y'all got to get up out of here. You ain't got no... You don't have time to wait for the yeast to rise. You about to get up out of Egypt, so you eat unleavened bread. Yeah. Amen. And then he says, men, when you're sitting here eating this Passover meal, I want you to have your staff in your hand. I want you to have your, sh your shoes on, because you about to get up out of here. Yeah. I want you to dress and ready to go. So the, so the Lord said, from now on, now, from now on, after this first Passover, every year, 
I want you to celebrate this Passover. Yes. So Jesus says, Jesus said, I didn't come to, to, to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. So Jesus, in his time here, he observed all the feasts. He did all the things that a good Jewish person would do. So he said to his disciples, I want you to go prepare for the Passover. And it's significant that he died during Are you getting it? Yes. See, God, remember I told you last week, OCD is underrated. Every detail that God uses is, has meaning. Amen. He just don't do anything just random. Amen. This is all lining up. Amen. Hmm. So, then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. Look up on the next page. It says, the Passover feast opened with the prayer of thanksgiving. Got it? It says, followed by, there's four cups of wine that gets passed around during this Passover feast. You see it? Now, put a little note for instance, sister. You know, down home, I, I want to go down home for a second. Down home, uh, it's funny, some, some of the traditions that we had done in the South, uh, uh, one of the songs we used to sing was Drinking of the wine, wine, wine and Drinking of the wine, oh my Lord You ought to been there 10,000 years Drinking of the wine It wasn't the kind of wine that made you drunk <laughs> it's just, So, you know, if they're drinking four cups of wine They're plastered, you know what like, <laughs> That's not what this is about. <laughs> so it says the wine was diluted with water and was not intoxicating. So they next they ate the bitter herbs and they they sang songs. We call them hymns, but the songs are actually poetry. They're actually songs. So they sang Psalms 113 and 114. Then they drank the second cup of wine and began eating the lamb and the unleavened bread. Again, no yeast. After drinking the third cup among them, it is likely that between the third and fourth cup of wine, Jesus institutes this new feast, this new, I call it ordinance, that we call the Lord's Supper. You get it again? Yeah. Get the picture? Amen. All right. So let's read the rest of the verses, and then we'll talk about the rest of it. So it says, uh, verse 14, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. So he knows this is the last time he's going to be with them. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Verse 17 says, after taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new command, the new covenant, the new agreement in my blood, which is poured out for you. So he is observing the Passover, but he's adding something new. Before it was a physical lamb, I am now the lamb of God. What did John say when, when Jesus came to be baptized of John? John says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away. Yes, yes. Are you getting the picture? So, the number three says the Lord's Supper was instituted. The Last Supper is what we call the last meal Jesus ate with his disciples before his betrayal and arrest. Uh, Jesus also used the Last Supper to imbue the Passover with new meaning, institute the new covenant, establish an ordinance for the church. And one of the questions that I was asked as I was becoming a deacon, what are the two ordinances of the church? One of them is baptism, and the other is the, the Lord's Supper. Right there. 
this in your note. Jesus took this thing to another level. He made it new. Because no longer was it a physical lamb, he became the lamb. And if his, again, as I already said, when his blood is applied to our hearts, we're free from the bondage of sin. And then, I wanted to, we always read this, but I wanted to take you and show you some things that we learned from Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Because Paul gave the order of the supper. First, Jesus broke a piece of, a piece from the unleavened loaf. He gave thanks and shared it with the disciples, saying this, saying that it represented his body, which was forgiven, was, which, excuse me, which was given for them. Then he gave thanks for the cup and shared it, saying it represented his blood. It was a simple ob ob observance that used the same basic elements as this humble Jewish meal. So the next few minutes, before we actually observe the Lord's Supper, I want to share with you some, 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 some takeaways, some, some, some things that I think that the Lord's Supper, uh, some purposes that we get when we share in the, the Lord's Supper, or some of us refer to as communion. So first thing, Watch this. The first one is that we look back. When we, when we share as... Let me, let, me, let me share this with you real, real quick before I move on to that. Imagine in your mind this word community. Right? C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y. In, in the middle of that is the word what? Unity. We're a community of believers. We are united. Remember back in the 60s, some of you remember that people would go off to communes? <laughs> so the root word still is that unity. There's a group of people that go off in the woods and just say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come together. We have the same beliefs. We're gonna live together. We're gonna do whatever we do, eat wild berries or whatever we do in the woods and put, sing songs and whatever. That's what community is about. Those of us that, are, that have been saved, we have been baptized into this body of Christ. And so we are a community of believers. Amen. You and I are connected by the Spirit of God. You and I are connected because we have one Father. And communion is something that we do together as believers. And when we come together as the body of Christ, as we come together as believers, one of the things that communion helps us do is remember the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ. Amen. So he said, when you do this, you do this in remembrance. Amen. Anybody getting it? Learning it? Yeah. We first thing, so we look back at his sacrifice. The second thing, it says that you, we do this in, in anticipation that one day he's coming back. Yes. So let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mentions. I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself. So we look forward in anticipation that one day yes. all our troubles And then the third thing is, so we look back at Jesus the sacrifice. We look forward to him coming back again. And then in one part of that scripture, it says, we need to examine ourselves. Because Paul says, many people have died because they didn't take the communion. So we need to examine ourselves. Amen. He said, Paul, Paul said the, uh, the Corinthians had something called love feast. And they start turning it into like a party. He said, some of you are eating, you don't eat at home. He said, if you're hungry, eat at home. Don't just come and right. eat and drink and party. And this is special. Amen. This is something important. This is one of the ordinances that Jesus said, this is what I want the church to do together. So it's not a 
about popping some grape juice and throwing it back a couple crackers. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be serious. There's, there's more to this. So we need to examine ourselves. And then that D says to remind us that we are one. We're, it says he broke from one loaf, meaning oneness. He, we broke from one loaf. We are a community of believers sharing life in Christ. The Passover in its origin, original stage. Each family observed it together in their own homes. So it's the a unity thing. It's the family thing that we do together. He said, it, uh, if if you have you don't have enough people in your family, then maybe you and another family next door can share together. If if there you know there's too much, uh, one lamb is too much for you by yourself. So he he was always in this uniting people to observe this together, and. Here's one other thing. Don and I have, have spoken of this, and, and I want to share it with you again. This ordinance is special. And we're blessed when we not only just physically participate, but when we are immersed, like Rhonda said, when we are engaged both mentally and spiritually in what's happening. I've been in places where it was just like a communion was just like an afterthought. This is something that you did, and people just went through the motions. No, 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 no. This means something. We look back, we look forward, we look in, and we should be giving thanks for all that He's done for us. Amen. I don't have time, but let me just mention these. Uh, also at the supper, I wish we had time to talk about it. Uh, Jesus identifies his betrayer. He says, one of you that has your hand with me on the table is going to betray me. At the, at, at the end of the supper, the, the, the disciples are arguing about who's going to be the greatest. And so Jesus gives them some, some, some teaching moments. And the, the greatest teaching moments when he girds, girds himself with the towel. And he washes his disciples' feet. He says, you want to be great, you be a servant. Then he tells Peter, says, hey, uh, you're going to betray me before the rooster crows. Then says, they sang a song or a hymn. And he goes to the, next week we'll see where he goes to, uh, to Gethsemane, where he begins just to pray. And he is praying so powerfully, it says his sweat is as drops. Father, is it possible that this cup pass from me? But not my will, but your will be done. So what we're about to observe today is part of what Jesus instituted in that upper room. And he endued, embowed, imbued the, the Passover to something new. died for us and we 